We've got this really cool article courtesy of The Guardian regarding Lux Maxing, which I thought was absolutely hilarious because this has been something that I've kind of like got into myself in the last few years and something that I've kind of been aware of because of 4chan and shit from back in the day. But it's quite funny to see this stuff like permeating through popular culture and becoming like a mainstream thing. So this is courtesy of The Guardian. It says, from bone smashing to chin extensions, how Lux Maxing is reshaping young men's faces. Let's continue. Um, for James, it started with muscles. He was about 16 and had become self-conscious about his physique. Fearing that he wasn't buff enough to attract girls, he found his way to a bodybuilding forum and began to work out. That's the same journey for me. If you if you know about back in the day when the PUA community wasn't as toxic as it was towards the end and you read the game and shit, the first platforms that kind of spoke about, you know, um, self improvement that spoke about girls that spoke about gym work all this sort of stuff right um, was bodybuilding forum that was the OG place that you would go and then from there you might actually go and you know real social dynamics all these other places but the bodybuilding forum back in the day I was on that bitch for a long time they weren't visitors from another online community da, da, da. Um, their general vibe was quite mean he says who prefers not to use his real name they take images of people who have posted on their improvement um, press of physiques and they'd be like you guys forgot to work out on your faces despite the meanness curiosity pushed James over the forums which were largely focused on facial aesthetics he discovered a new world in which mainly young men and teenage boys scoured pictures of each other for perceived flaws and purported fixes. The forums hummed with brutal judgments and offered James a compelling new outlet for his insecurities. I was learning about problems that I hadn't even noticed. I had a short face. I had a short chin. My nose was too wide. My eyes were too far apart. My hairline was too high. You don't see a lot of these things until somebody points them out and then you just can't stop seeing them. So I love all these things because I've always said that part of the unfair side of like dating and relationships and shit whatever it may be is that there is just a big difference in terms of the way women can glow up and the way men can because women have makeup we don't there's no way we can structurally improve our face or no there's no way we can visually improve our face without improving it with some sort of surgery because women have the ability to literally paint their face new. They can paint a new face on top of their face to accentuate things that they have, accentuate things they don't even have, and completely transform them from like sometimes a zero to a nine. But men don't have that. The closest thing we have to like makeup is a beard. And even that, sometimes, if your face isn't right, it doesn't matter if you've got a beard, right? So it's just one of those, one of those things. So I feel like looks maxing was such a great thing because it allowed men to kind of get to that level of makeup because you you know it kind of got into into like um skincare routines facial massaging routines diet um working out things that would improve how your face just was put together and sometimes even styling tips that are really kind of different and kind of give it a little leg up when it came to improving your looks um for the opposite sex or the same sex it continues James had become hooked on looks maxing, an online community of people seeking enhancing to their face. It began. Uh, he began to learn a strange code members used to compare characteristics: IPDs, interpolary distances, the gap between the eyes, um, the canful tilt, the angles of the eyes, mewing, a tongue exercise that supposedly improves the shape of your jaw, and the ultimate goal is to improve your SMV, sexual market value. Now, to be fair. To be fair, if this picture is legit, he did a good job. If this picture on the screen that I'm seeing now is legit, he did a good job. On the left, I guess it's the guy before he got into looks maxing. And on the right, this is him with looks maxing. You can tell he's got an improved haircut. You can tell he's kind of trimmed his eyebrows. You can tell he's done a good skincare routine. The plump of his lips has improved. He's got a more defined jawline. He's got a good little trimmed beard going on. You can tell from his um, shoulders, his lats, he's, you know, he's got, like, what do you call it? He's got some good uh, gym routine going on there. So all these things have definitely kind of improved the way he looks, his confidence with people, and obviously just his ability to attract certain people as well so that's obviously what i love to see here it continues looks maxing has existed for at least a decade but has exploded in recent months from an obscure forums and reddit pages into mainstream social media and tiktok in particular impossibly chiseled jaws pouty lips and cheekbones as high as egyptian pyramids are prized along with hunter eyes those angles slightly towards the nose and a positive cantal tilt Looks maxing influencers have gained huge followings while algorithms promote videos watched by millions. 
Models such as Jordan Barrett and Francisco Lapchowski have become pinups. The trend have prompted bewilderment among parents and teachers concerned that young people are finding yet more reasons to feel bad about themselves. I don't think it's that. I just think it's a lack of honesty about how much those things actually help. Because I think when I was growing up, especially when I was having trouble kind of attracting girls and shit, I I always had this confused opinion that it was always about how you looked. It obviously did matter, but it was mostly based on your confidence in yourself. But it's hard to have confidence in yourself if you're not happy with what you see in the mirror. And I think there's like it's kind of like a fine line. You can't get too into it and too obsessive of it, but it is important to feel good inside and on the outside so that you can then be your best self when you step out and you try to approach people in a sexual way, in a relationship way, whatever it may be. This is super important, especially for men. I think so personally for myself, that's the issue that I had. But again, people, other people could be different. Um, it's not clear how far mainstream looks maxing has moved away from the roots and the online incel involuntary celibate communities in these spaces men blame women and feminism for their romantic feel failings and um, they're re retreating into a world in which they pursue their own masculine ideals ideally acquiring ripped bodies in the case looks maxes strong jaws hunter eyes this is where i hate these kind of platforms right because they're now saying that looks maxing is a part of incels it's not if anything it's the opposite Intel community are losers who kind of, you know, denigrate women and blame them for all their fucking, you know, um, ills in life. Whereas the looks maxers take responsibility for their shortcomings and try to improve them to make themselves a more viable mate, partner, you know, interest for somebody else. That's what they actually do. They talk about how to improve the way you speak, how to improve your listening ability, your charisma, like everything, your hygiene, whatever. It's all flipping encapsulated in looks maxing. So to kind of attribute it or link it to incel community is absolutely ridiculous, especially if you've been into it as long as I have, or if you've just been aware to it, you'll know this is the case. So people do this all the time. It's fucking stupid. Um, it continues. The vast majority of... The vast majority... Sorry, the vast majority of the groups that we work with are now aware of looks maxing, says Nick Nicholson. Sorry, Mick, N Mike Nicholson, a teacher who runs a workshop program school called the Progressive Masculinity. He's talking to me a day after a report by researchers at the University of College of London that University of Kent found that TikTok algorithms amplify misogynistic content. Mm, all right. Um, helping to normalize in playgrounds. In response, TikTok said it removed misogynistic content, which it, pro which it prohibits, and questioned the report's methodology. We come at this from a very sympathetic point of view, said Nicholson. But the world that these young men and boys are inhabiting is one that is trying to increase their anxieties and potentially lead them down a path that, if you're not careful, can lead to an incel ideology. Not really. It's not true at all. If anything, I've always, I've always believed, I've always believed that there should be more encouragement of men actually trying to improve themselves and approach women, quote unquote, in public, as opposed to fucking turning them into these fucking incel bedroom guys. I think it's actually important to like have these things out there in the public and encourage because it makes men more of a, uh, what do you call it? it? It just improves them, makes them more of a viable mate, makes them more of an appealing person. It makes them a better person overall, as opposed to the other side of things. I, I, you know, the, the online dating thing, I think has always been a bit of a ruse anyway. I think this kind of emphasis on actually improving yourself on the outside, on the inside, so on the outside and the inside is definitely going to be better for humanity and society overall. But again, what do I know? James was in his 20s and works in finance in the UK, started on the forums and looks maxing in 2015. When they were still in the niche, he began soft maxing tweaks such as hairstyling, skincare remedies and diets, exercise regimes. But as the site threw up an ever harsher mirror, he began seeking more extreme fixes known as hard maxing. He went under the knife in 2012, 2022, sorry, 2022 to smooth his nose. Last year, he had Botox on his forehead, threaded his eyebrows and got his teeth whitened and straightened. He is considering chin surgery, which he said would add thousands to the 10,000 he avoided the investment on his face. Jesus Christ. Okay, he's going in. The size of the chin is quite a diamorphic trait like a signal of masculinity. I'm looking to vertically extend mine <laughs> by a few millimeters. <laughs> I love it, bro. Imagine vertically extending your chin, just coming out with a fucking Matt Rye fucking box. Imagine I just turned up one day and I was on a stream, I was doing a fucking content, just saw a picture of me of this fucking, with this fucking box chin. I just turned up with my, with my Turkish teeth. Yeah? and my box chin like nothing's happening that would be so great i might actually do that actually turn up one day just like you know what i mean like threaded eyebrows box chin 
Turkish teeth just like glistening, blinding you. Now, that would be fucking hilarious. James says he stays out of the more toxic corners of Lux Maxine forums. If anything, he thinks a new wave of TikTok has excluded much of the misogyny, but he says the potential remains for such content to stoke insecurity, some of which um, the flaws aren't fixable at all. A lot of teenagers are out there. It can definitely be bad for their mental health. Um, one of the biggest names in tick looks maxing is Kareem Sahim, a 22 year old student in San Diego, California. He goes by the username Syrian Psycho and has more than 1.5 million followers. His profile picture is Patrick Bateman, the fictional serial killer played by Christian Bale. Sahim grew up in Syria until his family were uprooted from the war. He says I was the only Syrian and was quite white looking despite being Arab. I was deemed an outcast and triggered something in me. Acne also dented his confidence. Sahim, who moved to the US to go to university, began trying to improve his look. He hit the gym. He treated his spots and restyled his hair and clothes and documented some of what he was doing on TikTok, where he offered advice. Um, Sahim says he wasn't even aware of looks maxing until 2022 when he posted a fast cut progress video showing how his appearance had altered between ages of 17 and 20. It's striking how poised and polished he was become. Although he accepts that boys' faces can change radically in those years, either way, the video blew up. It's been viewed 50 million times. It also went viral in the Looks Maxim forums, fueling skepticism, bordering on a contempt among original members of the community for brash TikTok avarites. Um, I get daily hate, Sami says, who also says he rejects Looks Maxim in cell tradition and that Bateman and incel pinup inspired him only to improve his looks. Of course, no one actually wants to be like that character. He says he relates to Bateman's loneliness. Um, Shaheem uh, says older adults don't get Looks Maxim. There's been much more hand wringing in the media over the bone smashing, for example, an extreme technique that involves taking a hammer to your face to put what wow i didn't know that was a thing bone smashing for example an extreme technique that involves taking a hammer to your face to promote more manly regrowth when the bones repair but little evidence than anyone actually doing it <laughs> that is wild <laughs> breaking the bones in your face to make them what grow bigger or something fucking hell the, the majority of the posts that you see about looks maxing are not serious adding he promotes only soft maxing but james journey shows that vulnerable kids can take this stuff seriously the biggest buzzword is mewing which shaheem imposes espouses sorry a teenager looking a bit tense in the jaw area may well be holding his tongue firmly against the roof of his mouth in an attempt to strengthen his jaw muscles in the bizarre clash of cultures mewing is named after an orthodist uh, orthodontist in kent who is well into his 90s since the 1970s john mew has promoted awful um orphophoric or no orphotropics his convention his controversial alternatives to braces and tooth extractions the mu say that this their tongue exercises childhood um palate expanding devices and dietary changes can improve aesthetics of the face as well as overall health so yeah that's a look at an article coach of the guardian um check it out yourself if you haven't checked it out i think it's fucking brilliant i i encourage Everybody should dabble into look match, especially men. I think it's really important to, you know, try to get the most, to try to improve what you already have as a base because we don't have much men. We have, a, we have what, a nice jacket. We have a haircut. We have maybe some a beard shape up or whatever. Um, but we don't have much to kind of improve our looks, unfortunately, especially with the lack of, you know, people accepting makeup for men in conventional circles and shit. It'll probably get there eventually in the world. There'll probably be a time where makeup for men will be a kind of a thing that people do. But nowadays, it's not really. Um, unless you're obviously within the LGBT community, you can do what you want in that regard. But if you're not, it's not really widely accepted. So until that comes a point that it is, you have to make do what you have and make doing what you have looks like the only way to do it improving your skincare routine improving your fucking hygiene improving your fashion or your style for lack of a better term i think because think you know fat style probably helps men improve how they look way more than fashion would and just kind of doing the best you can to improve what you already have that is only way you can really kind of open yourself up to better options out there when it comes to dating and relationships and sex and whatnot but just in general for you just your confidence and how you carry yourself i think it's really important to kind of dibble into these type of things and kind of you know because i think men can do this a bit brutally without it being a issue of like you know without it becoming toxic and shit i think maybe women's a little bit probably probably shouldn't get into this stuff because maybe the insecurities once you open that door there's no kind of closing it but i think men can do this sort of stuff without it being too destructive 
I know I'm saying this, it doesn't make sense, but I think that's the case. But big up um, the Looks Matter community. And again, check the article out. I'll put it in the descriptions for those of you that want to read it and check it for yourself.